All right, time to go teach. Hello and welcome to this next episode of Tutor Tutors, where we are going to continue on biochemistry, looking at our second biomacromolecule, carbohydrates. Our learning targets for today are, first, that you'd be able to describe the general structure of a monosaccharide, which does mean that we are going to have to define what a monosaccharide is. And our second learning target for the day is describing how organisms use carbohydrates. So let's get this thing started. First, carbohydrates, those are typically referred to as sugars. So anytime that you are thinking about sugar, you are thinking about a carbohydrate. Their functions, well, they store and provide energy for the organism that is consuming it or that is building it. Second, it's also for structural support. And we'll look at specific carbohydrates for structural support in the next episode. The generic chemical formula for the monomer of a carbohydrate is CH2O, parentheses, N. The N is a variable. It just means that you can have any number of carbons and hydrogens and oxygens in this one to two to one ratio. So the number of carbons and oxygens are going to be equal and the number of hydrogens will be double that. And then we get to some vocab words, monosaccharides, disaccharides, and lastly, polysaccharides. What did those words actually mean? Well, the prefixes tell you. Mono means one. So the monosaccharide is a single unit of a carbohydrate. Next, we have the disaccharide, and di, that prefix means two. So this is after we have two monosaccharides bonded together, we end up with a disaccharide. And lastly, we have the polysaccharide, and that is where we have, instead of just one unit or two units, now we have many units, poly meaning many, joined together. And every one of these are going to be joined together using dehydration synthesis, just like for fatty acids and their lipids coming together with glycerol. The reaction that will continuously be used is dehydration synthesis to build. And to break them down, to go from a disaccharide to two monosaccharides would use hydrolysis. Some simple monosaccharides, whether there are six carbons or five carbons or four carbons, every single time they go in a one to two to one ratio. So if there are six carbons, that means that there are 12 hydrogens and there are six oxygens. If there are only five carbons, that means that there are 10 hydrogens and five oxygens. And if there are four carbons, then we have eight hydrogens, and four oxygens. This ratio only works for monosaccharides. It doesn't work once we start to get to a disaccharide or a polysaccharide because we have to remove that water every single time that they bond together, which only removes hydrogen and oxygen. And since we don't remove any carbon, that means this ratio is going to fall apart as we build polysaccharides. But these all are monosaccharides, and you'll notice that there are multiple monosaccharides with the exact same chemical formula. And we'll talk about what that means in a little bit. But before we go there, I just want you to see that normally when we look at monosaccharides, we could look at them in a linear fashion, but most of the time when we look at a monosaccharide, we actually are going to look at the cyclical structure, which We'll demonstrate how that is formed right here. So we take our linear monosaccharide, and this one you can see is C6H1206. This is one of those hexoses, right? Hex, meaning that it has six carbons, and os is the ending that we use for carbohydrates. So this is a hexose, and if it were to cycle around, then we would have the typical cyclical structure that we would look at when we're thinking about our monosaccharides. So 
So this is how we typically in biology are going to be looking at our monosaccharides. We will be looking at them in the cyclical structure. It doesn't matter if it is a hexose like this, or if it's a pentose where it has only five carbons, or a tetrose where it has four. Which, all of those we will be looking at in a cyclical conformation. But I did want you to be aware that it's also drawn sometimes with a linear conformation. But they are the exact same model molecule, whether they are in the linear or in the cyclical structure. And this leads us to a really important idea, which is called isomerization or isomers. These are when we have two or more compounds that have the exact same chemical formula, but the way that those elements are put together is different, and that means that we have different molecules. So the arrangement of the elements is going to be important for us, not just what elements and in what numbers they are, but how they are actually put together. And that's how we can have so many different monosaccharides that have the exact same chemical formula because the elements are put together in a slightly different fashion. For example, glucose and fructose. As you saw before, these are both molecules with the exact same chemical formula. They both have the formula C6H12O6. They are made with six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms. But the way that those atoms are actually arranged is different, and that means that we have a different molecule. The way that fructose and the way that glucose interact is different because of the way that those elements are arranged. That gives them a different shape, and that means that they will be able to be received by different molecules as well, or that they will be able to interact with different molecules. And that's going to be really important for us as we progress and we look at how cells are going to be using these different molecules, specifically using glucose. And that makes our dimer of sucrose, which is table sugar, is a disaccharide made up of one glucose molecule and one fructose molecule bonded together. That gives us our dimer, or our disaccharide, which happens to be, you know, very common and what I put in my coffee every single day. So in summary, what do we got? Well, first off, carbohydrates, they are used for energy storage and they are used for structural components of some cells. Next, many monosaccharides, they can have the exact same chemical formula, but they are going to interact differently with different things. They are going to have different properties because of the way that those elements have come together. Since the way those elements have bonded together is different, that means that they are going to have different properties. And that is what an isomer is all about. And lastly, monosaccharides. Just like every other biomacromolecule that we're going to talk about, they come together using dehydration synthesis, and they break apart using hydrolysis. That's the same thing every single time. On that note, until next time, be awesome, stay awesome.